Last year, when the Xbox Series S and X released, we covered it extensively on the channel. Particular note is how you could easily put any Xbox One or Series console into developer mode and effectively sideload in emulators with amazing results. The power of the Xbox Series S really shows off what was possible with the likes of Nintendo Wii, GameCube, Sega Dreamcast and even Sony PlayStation 2 offering amazing user emulation experiences at impressive speeds. But let's turn our attention to PlayStation 1. Now you might be wondering, PS1 has been emulated for years and there should be nothing special about it. And yes, you would be correct. So at the end of last year, a new PlayStation 1 emulator had arrived on the scene known as Duck Station. Now when it comes to PS1 emulation, you have a lot of different choices as a consumer. But Duck Station supports internal resolution scaling all the way up to 16 times. And that is the equivalent of, I believe, about 8K. Now, in today's episode, we are going to take a closer look at Duck Station running on, as you can see right behind me here, the Xbox Series S. Duck Station is the newest PlayStation 1 emulator that has a focus on performance and long-term support and maintainability. It was developed by Stenzek and was released at the end of 2020, and on July 11th of this year, a UWP Xbox port was added. This means that using your Xbox One or Series console in development mode, you can indeed load and run this emulator. As mentioned, there are many PS1 emulators out there on the market, but Duck Station has one feature that really makes it stands out. Internal resolution scaling all the way up to 16x. Now Duck Station supports resolution scaling. Now what we can do with the Xbox Series S and indeed the Xbox Series X is increase that resolution. If we boost it up to 9x, that is the equivalent of a 4K display. And the great news is we can do this both on an Xbox Series S as well as the Series X. So the Series S is not confined in any shape or form. If you have the ability to display your Series S on a 4K display, then Duck Station will resolution boost internally up to 9x and get a crisp and smooth 4K output. And thanks to the power of the Xbox Series S, it's locked at 60 FPS. Now keep in mind, many PlayStation 1 games internally never come close to 60 FPS, but we can also address that as well. More on that later. Duck Station simply looks and runs amazing. I threw some popular PS1 games at it, and the visuals presented here are simply unmatched. It's that good. Behind D, Colonel, what's a Russian gunship doing here? I have no idea. Now, Duck Station is fully open source, and you can download the UWP version on their website, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below and you can very easily run this on your Xbox Series S or Series X, or indeed the older Xbox One series, assuming that you have your system in developer mode. Now setting up the Xbox in developer mode is pretty easy to do. There are many guides out there, and I've also covered this in a previous episode. Now once you have downloaded the UWP version of Duck Station, it's as easy as installing it like you normally would if you have your Xbox in developer mode via the browser that is provided. Now once you have Duck Station set up, the first thing that you need to provide is a BIOS image and a couple of ROM files in order to test this out. In the past, when I tested emulation under developer mode, there was some limitations on where you could launch ROMs. And in general, they needed to be installed on the internal storage. But Duck Station doesn't have this issue. You can install both your BIOS and ROM dumps onto a USB flash drive and access it from there. And it works perfectly well. Once you're set up, the next thing that I recommend is to access the enhancements menu. And this is where you can increase the internal resolution scale. 9x is what's needed for 4K output and this is my preferred setting. You can also apply true color rendering, which will smooth out the dithering patterns found on PlayStation 1 games. And then there's also texture filtering, which will smooth out textures. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of texture filtering as they tend to apply a Vaseline-like effect. And in my opinion, it takes away from the original artwork that was intended for the game. But if you are a fan of filtering, then you'll be very happy with the results. Some people do prefer it. Duck Station makes heavy use of shaders for its work, and most changes in the enhancement menu 
does require a recompile of shaders, but fortunately this is pretty quick. I want to talk about other features of the emulator that while not exclusive to DuckStation, are implemented in an easy to use fashion and thanks to the power of the Xbox Series S, show no noticeable performance issues and can in some instances enhance the emulation experience. The first one is texture warping correction. PS1 does not have perspective correct textures, but DuckStation has a setting to correct them. Here's Tomb Raider 2. Running around the mansion you can clearly see the texture warping in the bricks. But if we enable the perspective correction option, the warping effect is effectively eliminated. And it does look a lot cleaner. Now one of the side effects of this however is to introduce Z fighting in some scenarios. But there are other options to address this as well. Perspective correction is a great addition, but keep in mind it needs a lot of processing power. But thanks to the RDNA 2 Xbox Series S CPU, it handles it with ease. Now many will appreciate this option as it does offer a solution that simply was not possible on original hardware, but others may argue that it takes away from the PlayStation 1's charm. Either way, this is a great inclusion and on the Series S, it works nicely. Now one of the really cool features about DuckStation, and I want to add that it's not exclusive to DuckStation, I think this is available on a lot of PS1 emulators out there, but it's the ability to overclock the MIPS CPU. Now there are some really great examples of overclocking that I want to illustrate. The first one is the intro to Chrono Cross. As you can see here, it's running between 15 to 20 FPS. It's the kind of typical PlayStation experience that you would have gotten in the late 90s, early 2000s when you were playing games like this. But if we increase the overclocking of the MIPS CPU up to 500%, in other words, five times the processing power of a stock PS1, you can see that it runs as smooth as butter at 60 FPS. Now remember, this is all still happening at 9 times internal resolution, and it's really starting to show off the power of the hardware. Chrono Cross runs at 60 FPS, and the game is quite transformative. Overclocking, however, is not the magic bullet to fix every single game's frame rate on PS1, and you should consider it just another option in a bag of tricks that can heighten the overall experience. Power Slave by Lobotomy Software is another game that has a 60 FPS cap, but most of the time never reaches that number, only in very select scenarios, usually when you're standing facing a wall. But at 4K internal resolution with 5 times overclocking enabled, it's a silky smooth 60 FPS experience. Impressive stuff. Overclocking can also help with 30 FPS cap games, such as Gran Turismo 2. The game is capped at 30 and it does help smooth out frame rates, especially in replay mode. Overall, overclocking is a nice feature to have. Now of course there are other features when it comes to this emulator but these are the main ones that I wanted to focus on. And overall the Xbox Series S continues to impress with this new addition to the emulation library that runs in developer mode. DuckStation is an outstanding emulation experience and one definitely worth checking out if you own an Xbox Series S or an X. And a big shout out to Stenzek and the work done to make this emulator a reality on Xbox hardware. But these are my thoughts and opinions on DuckStation running on the Xbox Series S. I think it is really impressive. This is probably hands down the best PlayStation 1 experience I've had running under emulation. It is that good and I strongly recommend you guys check it out. I'll leave links to everything in this episode below in the description. So take a look at DuckStation if you are interested. I think it is a very impressive emulator. Now I did say when I was covering emulation on the Xbox Series S at the end of last year that it was probably the best hands down experience that you would get on a console and I stand by that. DuckStation is very impressive and I can't wait to see what's next. But we are going to leave it here for this episode. Don't forget to put a thumbs up on it if you liked it and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.